if your boss told you to do this and you were employed, you would do it. If you've got to do this by the end of the day, you would do it. Yet you're now your own boss and you won't do it. I just see coaches talk a lot, but I don't see them doing a lot. Because it feels like it's an afterthought. You see it with people's stories. You see it with people's posts. It's an afterthought and they're expecting people to come in. Are you comfortable putting that out? Do you really feel like you're the embodiment of that message? coaches where does your time go hello we are dan and mike from business and banter and we are here formerly by us banner i'm gonna have to keep saying that for a little while aren't I? um and we're here to help you with your fitness business in any way that we can and today we want to talk about why oh, as an online coach your time management is probably costing you a lot of money a lot of clients um and a lot of headaches um yeah, basically that's what we're going to talk about. Not se not as sexy as some of the other things we're going to talk about today, but um, in our other videos, sorry. But it's something that I see a lot of coaches bang on about and I get really annoyed and I want to scream at my phone sometimes when I see online coaches using the example of if you've got time to watch Netflix, you've got time to work out. It fucking breaks me every time I see it. It, it absolutely breaks me because I then get the same coaches saying that they don't have time to work on the business, they don't have time to make better content, they don't have time to write better emails, they don't have time to do any of this sort of stuff. So it really gets, <laughs> really, really gets to me. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about kind of time, what we do maybe in our spare time a little bit, what we've done previously, how hard you maybe need to work, all that sort of stuff. Because I think there's, again, a lot of um, misconceptions in uh, in this space around. Yeah, coaches are, uh, are the biggest hypocrites. And I appreciate that, obviously, all of my clients are coaches. So, you know, it's not a, a, a stab at, at you guys per se, but... Um, it's it's this narrative of and there's there's numerous things in terms of like um, consistency uh, and they're eager to share a Michael Jordan quote um, and then not put in the consistency themselves. Um, they're well, eager. Not failed, yeah. They yeah. use that one. Oh, yeah, I failed loads of times. Put that quote, but then you never you're scared of failing on content or emails. <laughs> That's one thing. Yeah. Number number two, like you've just said there, it's like oh, you tell yourself you've got no time, but you sat watching Netflix again. We work with a lot of coaches. Coaches are just as bad, if not as bad. Um, even even to some degree, um, which does tie into kind of what you're doing with your time. Scheduling, making time to, to, to even do a check-in. Would you believe that um, some yeah. coaches can't get check-ins in on time? And imagine how frustrated they are with their clients and telling them, you need to be able to take this seriously. Um, you, you, need know, I, this, yeah. you need to prioritize it. Accountability is a massive part of it. Yet, won't, you'll be surprised um, the amount of times that people cannot sort their schedule out. Uh, and there really is no excuse for it, to be completely honest, because um, respectfully, I know how busy our calendars are with the amount of clients and what we have to do and so on and so forth. Yeah. We're sat here on a Sunday whilst the Ryder Cup's on, for example, um, filming videos. Um, um, tight. It's tight as well at the moment. Yeah, Fuck. yeah. Um, like, be, be, <laughs> because it is our priority, because it, it is... Um, how are they getting on? Uh, We're winning. Yeah, Europe. It's Europe. fine. Still Europe. 14, 7, Europe. Europe. Um, Yeah, so... If to us it is a priority so again coaches need to sometimes take their own advice um because again respectfully and this is not me digging anybody out of course it's not because i wouldn't do that um specifically it's you need to start to prioritize your business um you need to start to look at yourself as a business what would normal business operations look like what how much time would be devoted to marketing to advertising to client fulfillment, to sales, to admin. What what time would be um, allocated? We spoke about this previously. If your boss told you to do this and you were employed, you would do it. If you've mm -hmm. got to do this by the end of the day, you would do it. Yet you're now your own boss and you won't do it. Um, yeah. Yet you will have the the you know the hypocritical attitude to to kind of have this narrative online around clients being lazy and people committing to it and prioritizing it, yet you, you're you not doing the same thing for yourself. I just sometimes wish, I, I think coaches need to take the same attitude that, that Gen Pop have with their work. I want to see coaches work from eight until six mm -hmm. and then go and work out. Work out in the morning or the evening, the same time your clients do. Oh, I don't want to you know, do, do that. I've got into online coaching so I could be more flexible yeah, and okay. balanced. That's fine. So you do the gym work then and then you work till eight o'clock. 
right, it was no, it was no, it's no surprise to, to you guys that I play golf three times a week. You've heard me say this before, right? So on those days when I do, um, do play golf, I probably get to my desk at what, 11 a.m. Uh, our time over here, 11 a.m. Do you think those days, do you think I'm sat watching Netflix at 7 p.m.? No. All right. I work till 9 p.m. those days, doing work, doing calls, catch up on stuff. I don't watch TV Monday to Friday. I just don't do it. I play golf. I'd rather play golf. I'd rather do all those things. We do other things that we're doing this YouTube filming now Sunday evening, 5 to 8 p.m. Yeah, it's not, it's not a brag. It's not, I'm not saying that. My point is that it just needs to be done so it gets done. And this is the thing is that we can sit here and talk about this because we are doing it. So we can preach about working hard and putting the effort in and making shit content that doesn't see the light of day. The amount of videos we've filmed in somewhere like this that you've never seen because they weren't good enough or weren't the right type of thing. Yeah, again, we fail loads of times, even now. But coaches aren't prepared to do it. Coaches aren't prepared to do that work. And I, and I see it all the time is they love working at an empty gym. Oh, it's easy. I can work at an empty gym, blah, blah, blah. But then they're not going to work to nine o'clock at night. They're not going to work and do the, do the effort and do the things that are needed because it's family time. Well, yeah, but you sacrificed that to go to the gym earlier. Just like you're asking your clients to do. And I think there's a massive disconnect with online coaches. I think the online coaches that do very well are the ones that can relate to people. Mm -hmm. um, and they're the ones that I think that, that do that. Um, and, and it frustrates me because I want to say to coaches, look, have your free time, do all these other things. Like I said, like with me with golf, I, I would much rather be playing a round of golf than sit and watch Netflix and sit and watch TV. I think it's brain, I think it's just like numbing my brain. I just don't like it. Um, I watch sports events and that sort of stuff all the time. That's me personally. It's just my preference, right? So I've got a bit of a thing about it. Um, I, I get a bit antsy. I don't know about you, but I, I, you know, if I'm sat there and I'm like, I could be doing some work that I know needs to be done and it's like before nine o'clock at night, I just can't sit down and watch TV. <laughs> I just don't know why. I just feel the need to, to do that before I can actually sit down. And then I might, at nine o'clock, I might put like something like Peep Show on for a couple of episodes and I go to bed or I go to bed at nine o'clock some days because I am up early playing golf, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like I'm in a position where I can do that and say that because I do the work. And I think that there's too many coaches we talked about before, they, they, they want in the lifestyle that they crave before putting the work in to, to, to get there, to, to, to sustain it as well. Because then they're the first ones to worry about their lead gen. Well, how many conversations have this week? Oh, I didn't really, didn't really count it. Oh, I don't really have time. So have you, been, have you been for a shit today? Yeah. So you could have done it then. You could have done it then. Sat down for five, 10 minutes, right? Turns out how long you take. You could have done it then. There's so many opportunities. And it's just, and it's just those excuses that their clients give to them that they don't like. Mm -hmm. That like I said, but we see all the time and we get it. Only this, I, I would argue, has got a lot more implication for, for your future. You could, you could argue not, it's your health, too, I suppose, but um, for your business. But I, I just see coaches talk a lot, but I don't see them doing a lot across yeah, the board. Um, I, um, I put up an Instagram story about two weeks ago when I started to read Alex Hormones' latest book and the, the the opening statement that is on the first page is, is something like do the work or um, work hard. Skip I think it's, bit. <laughs> work, it's work harder, mm -hmm. something like that. No, yeah, it is. It's work harder. That was, a, that was the first two words on a page of its own, work harder, and I facetiously scribbled out harder and put work less, you know, do less work, outsource everything, give a shit service, blah, 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 and mm -hmm. kind of went through that. And it, it sounds facetious, but it's actually what the fitness industry tends to do. Um, rather than working hard, it's look for the hack. Uh, can I get around that? You know? Yeah. Um, can I can I outsource that? Is there a way that I can do that without doing that? Um, do I have to do that? Oh, I don't really email because oh, it takes a bit long. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 30 minutes later, post a bit of content. Don't look for a hack when it comes to weight loss. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> it's Again, it's like your client's coming in and going, I want to be on stage next week. Uh, I want to be Mr. Olympia next week. Yeah, can I, can I not diet as well? Yeah, can I not? I don't want to do that part. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, it's, it's... And again, we're not sat here telling you the, the the sexy thing that most people do where you can only put in um an hour and a half a day and you know as a business owner you, you shouldn't be doing all of this stuff and you shouldn't be the admin person as well as the marketer and as well as this and as well as the editor and it's like no nah, you you should like you you should and and, and certainly we have been uh, you know and, and, and we've got to a position where we're at and we still do that work um, ourselves, shock horror. We still do our sales calls. We still do um, our DMs. You know, we still talk to the lowly people. You know, we don't have to outsource that. But there's just this narrative of, again, it's a sexy thing. It's like back in the day with the fat loss stuff. It's like eat more and, and lose more weight. That's the one that sells. I guarantee that that ebook sells quicker than uh, eat less food and lose more weight because it sounds better because it's sexier. So it's the same with the work thing. It's, you know, do less work and, you know, get more results. Do you really think that that is going to be the the um, the kicker? Like, is that it? Do you, do you actually deep down believe that? Or 
if you were to put money on it, would you go, I reckon working harder is probably going to benefit me? Like, if you were to put money on it either way, do you think you would hedge for work more or work less? Which one do you reckon is going to result in a better business? Mm. It's work more. So if you're not prepared to work more, I don't think that you can have the... Um, the not I don't want to say brass neck what what would I say like the arrogance to expect a bigger business without putting the work in for it because to some degree I feel like I know how much work we've put in and what it's taken us and the money and the effort and the time and the sacrifice and the Sunday Sunday evenings and the 3 a.m filming sessions and the traveling to to do a vlog in this city and um the 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 effort that we've put in and I just find that Maybe it's just me being an old man and a dinosaur going, well, it feels a little bit arrogant to think that you can do it doing less than, <laughs> than us. Why not why not match us? Why not beat us? Why not why not go above and beyond? Why not outwork us if that's what you do in the gym? But people don't. They don't because they want the easy life, but then are quick to moan about not having what they want out of the business. All the best bodybuilders, they say the same thing at work, work harder, do more, right? It's all that sort of thing where that, that whole thing comes from. But then you, you look even further than that, Elon Musk, do you think he do you think he does less work now? Nah, probably does more. Mark Zuckerberg, you know, all these people. Alan Hormozy, uh, uh, Alan, Alan, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> that's yes. what I from Alan, Alan, Alex Alan Hormozy, <laughs> Alex, Alex. It's in his book, the guys, the guys probably of our generation, probably one of the most successful entrepreneurs of our generation. It's in his fucking book, first page. Do you think? It, do you think he knows best? Then do you think maybe, or do you think the guy on the Facebook ads that you follow on Instagram as well? Do you think he knows best? The one, who, yeah. I wonder who knows who knows best. But it's that whole thing of like when I look at our weeks, like you just said there, and I speak to coaches, say, is your week planned out? Oh, not really. I'm like, I can tell you next week yeah. exactly what's going on in our Same. week. And I can tell you the week after as well. I can tell you. So next week is what we call our off week, right? So we don't have our check-ins, our formal check-ins, right? I have got from midday until 6 p.m. on Monday calls, pretty much back to back. Um, then after that, I've got um, stuff to do, admin bits from say six till seven uh, till, till eight or whatever. Um, Tuesday, you've got calls from like what, one till six? So I've got calls on Monday from um, I think 11, so 8 a.m. UK time, so yeah. 11 through till the last one at six. Yeah. But prior to that, on Monday, I'm gonna, I've got some training plans to write and I've got yeah. um, the presentation to make. Okay. Tuesday, so I'm one until five calls. But prior to that, I've got my fat loss check-ins and we've got filming. Yeah, so we've got that to do. So I've got fat loss check-ins and filming to do and then I've got some calls as well. And then while Mike's doing that, I've then got to write up the magazine and do emails this week, because um, Mike has a few more calls to do than me. Wednesday, pretty much the same thing. We've got content to make, content to film, calls till six, seven. Thursday, exactly the same thing, content, then calls. Our diaries are literally like planned out to a T, right? Sunday, we're working in the morning, filming, writing up plans, doing consults. The week after that, when we have our on week, even busier. Like literally Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, eight until six for me, probably longer for you. Longer, yeah. Um, Probably more like seven till seven. It is more for it you. Is about seven Tuesday to, seven, to yeah. Thursday and Monday is the same. We have calls pretty much twelve till six, always in our diary. So you look at that and go, right, I have to fit around that. Sales calls, consultations with people, DM outreach, content creation. Uh, luckily we have Gordon does edits of videos and, and things like that. But we still have to write captions, we still have to think about when we're gonna post it, we still have to do all our own social proof. We still have to film it. We still have to film all this stuff. And I sit there and I get a I get a coach who's got 25 clients. Oh, I just, just haven't got enough time to make any videos. I can't post every day. And I'm just sat there like... You can. You don't want to. Yeah. You don't want... Let's let's reframe this because I know you can because I do. Uh, as bad as that's... I know because I do it. Um, and, and that's what we always come back to is it's not about that whole thing of like, how much do you want it? You know, people used to say when you die, you know, oh, how much do you want it? Yeah. And it's a little bit of that that's annoying and things like that. But, but at the same time... It's true. I kind of go, yeah, but it, it's true. Because I know right now, right, I don't want fat loss as much as Mike because I'm eating shit. <laughs> not shit, but I'm not eating as great. I'm having chocolate and enjoying myself. Whereas Mike's currently dieting because he, fit, he got to a point where his fat loss was too much for him. He was like, it's, it's painful enough to do something about it. And that's all you do. You just move within that thing where it's painful enough to do something about it. My question to you is, is your business in a place where it's painful enough for you to actually do the fucking work? 
Because what I see is it's not. That's what I see. Whereas for us, we come from a, a place of, like say on the last video, a little bit of scarcity or whatever, but it's what drives us is to go, no, I don't want to be sitting there thinking I could have done more. I could have done a little bit more there. I could have done a little bit more here. Whatever it is. There's certain things as we've discussed in our schedules that we won't, I won't compromise, certainly. Mike's going to get there at some point in the future. Um, once he can hit a golf ball, he'll definitely want to do that then. If I had more time, um, I might be able to. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, but I, I, just, I just find it hard. And the whole point of this video was to, I, I find it hard to take from coaches. Um, when I see this content. So like, even, me right even, even with all of that stuff, right, I'm still like researching. I'm still like Dan said earlier, like you just sit there and, and watch Alex or Moses. So in spare or, time, that's what you're doing, right? It's in, not, you're not sitting there watching in, Netflix. In it's my like, spare time. Yeah. On the way to the gym, I listen to it. During the gym, I listen to it. On the way back from the gym, I listen to it. Before bed, I listen to it. Whilst I'm brushing my teeth, I listen to it in the morning and in the evening. Like, I, I'd listen and I learn. So I'm not just him. I'll look at other kind of um, uh, other other guys within business. Me uh, mainly. Yeah, mainly, mainly him. <laughs> um, I definitely know who not. Um, but anyway, um, that, that's what I do. And that's what I did when I was in, in fitness as well. So I would listen to a podcast on the way to work, during work, on the way back. I would have research Fridays because I put some time and effort into it. Whereas it feels like coaches want to do the bare minimum and I think I think it was another. I think it was a previous YouTube video when you mentioned it, it was like I got a post out, and the post is garbage. But but because you got that post out, oh you've done it. Like okay, that's your work for for, for the day done. Oh, I'm doing everything. Well, you're not doing everything, are you? Because you can research better what, copywriting. Yeah, did you write the caption three times? Yeah. Did you edit it three times? C you, no. Can you get better, better at video editing? Yeah. Um, can you uh, improve your service? Can you can you be working on things in the background? Can you be just improving all areas of, of your fitness business because it feels like it's an, an afterthought. You see it with people's stories. You see it with people's posts. It's an afterthought and they're expecting people to come in. Mm -hmm. Good luck. <laughs> it's not going to work. So you can keep doing that and going nowhere or you can actually put some time and effort into growing something for the next 6, 12 months, 18 months, graft and you'll be where you want to get to. Stop doing this thing where you put three weeks into it, half arsed, and go, mm, it's not really working. Yeah. And, and look, coaches are great, again, at planning out one week, two weeks. They get that, that motivation. Oh, I'm going to do it this time. Still don't do it. Nothing happens. Nothing happens again. Two weeks down the line, they need that little bit of bolt of, like, oh, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. And it's frustrating to see, and it's frustrating to be on the other end of. But I think my my biggest role in, in what we do is the is, is same as what it is for you. It's the accountability. It's getting someone to do what they said they were going to fucking do. And I think with coaches, I'm sick of seeing, like, please do not post another one of those posts until you can hand on heart say that you work hard enough. Like, can you imagine us doing this video if we were slackers? It wouldn't work. It wouldn't be right. It wouldn't fit right. I wouldn't be comfortable saying it. And I see a lot of coaches and I ask them, are you comfortable saying that? Are you comfortable putting that out? Do you really feel like you're the embodiment of that message? That's what you need to ask yourself. I'm not going to judge you either way for it. I mean, I am. You need to be, you need to judge yourself and go, can I put this content out? Is this me? Am I allowed to, am I allowed to preach? Alex Hormozzi is allowed to say work harder. Do you know why? Because I bet you if you asked him what happened on Married at First Sight Australia, he wouldn't have a fucking clue, right? Bet he wouldn't. He wouldn't have a clue about the Ryder Cup, for example, whatever, right? He wouldn't. He just wouldn't. I'm not saying you have to go to that level, but there are levels to it. And I think you need to ask yourself, how close to that level are you? certainly from how, cl how close are you to the level you need to be. But look at your calendar, look at your schedule, look at the time you've spent and just ask yourself and just say, could I, given, could I have given 10% more time business this week? I think you're going to say yes. Because guess what? I could say yes. I could say yeah. I could say yes. I'm happy with where I'm at, but I could give 10% more. I could. I'd give 20% more actually, realistically. Because I still take Saturday off and Friday's pretty much, well, apart from all the late fucking check-ins I have to do. I have Fridays off pretty much. I try and play golf and have the rest of the day off, but it never works out that way because I'm always chasing up clients that are doing their late fucking check-ins, which again tells me a lot about someone's business and how they view it. But that is what it is. So I could do more, technically. Sundays, again, like we've, we've had a pretty chill day, to be honest. We've done a bit of work. We've got this filming done. It's only four hours work. To me, that's a day off. Yeah. Four hours work. That's a day, day off, isn't it? It's a day off. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but that's it, right? That is it. And, and when you can talk about, oh, your missus getting annoyed and all this sort of stuff, getting annoyed, it's like, well, you need to communicate with that person better to, sh to show them what you're building, to show them why you're building it. So that in five years, they go, I'm really proud of you. Because mm 
Because I tell you what, that feels so much better than knowing what happened on Married at First Sight or Love Island this week. Yeah, I sure. promise you. No, I, I mean, I would say that because it's shit. But like, I know we, jo- we are pissed around. We jo- we, we're joking a little bit, but we're also being deadly serious. Like you said, the Ryder Cup is on right this second, right? And we were, we've been invested in it all weekend to the point where we nearly said, should we just cancel this, not bother? Should we nearly just sack it all off, right? It would have cost us some money that we'd have watched the Ryder Cup. But we're here. It was realistically not really an option. We're here. We're doing it. I love golf. Mike's now into golf. He's into it more than me at the moment. Fucking Ryder like, Cup. Well, yeah. I like Ryder Cup. It. Into Definitely. It. But Can't play it. I, I just think that that's, that's what we mean. This filming fell on a, on a Ryder Cup day, right? And we could have sat home and watched it, right? But we're here. It's more important. In, 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 and it will be in the long run because there'll be more Ryder Cups, more things like that. Our business will then in five years be better off for this. Again, you can't see it and say, because that one day, it's not about that. It's the mentality of the small days adding up over time that we now believe that four hours of filming is a, is a day off. That's a day off for us. So ask yourself, what do your days off look like? What do your days on look like? Could you work harder? And then do you have exactly what you deserve in your business right now? Because I would argue, yeah, probably. Probably.